Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, Wednesday edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Uh, quite a day, quite a day. We'll get to that uh, in a minute. Um, look, I, I think it's so important, folks. I, I, I can't overestimate, okay, and drive the point home that technical analysis, and, and I've been saying this for years, is your, your, your number one lifeline. There is no number two, three, four, and five. It's, it's your number one lifeline. And yesterday um, on the video last night, we identified why there was a really high probability chance that the market was going to pull in. Okay. Um, you know, did, did I think the Dow was going to go down 500 points? You know, probably not. Okay. I, I did think there was a sell bias in that area. I did believe beta considering they have really good expanded average ranges right now, we're definitely gonna give us some value, okay? So the, the opinion was there for a pull. It was an aggressive pull, it was gonna be a passive pull, we, we don't know, but the most important part is what we talked about is technical analysis. And a lot of people, you know, throughout the day, again, emails and text messages, hey, you know, great call on the rug pull, uh, the pivots were phenomenal today. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. But the one thing that I keep on, I kept on reiterating, it, 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 you're thanking the wrong person, okay? It has nothing to do with me. You, you have to thank the market. You have to thank technical analysis. What we looked at yesterday, okay, kind of a quick review, um, first close on the five-day moving average, and we were just waiting for the confirmation today. So what we, you know, what we talked about last night, what I talked about last night is, is right in front of everybody. So the idea that somebody that is in the market, that's full blown in the market, uh, carries inventory, um, going into today's session, not being prepared for the possibility that their position, that they're holding, their, their, their holdings that they're holding, uh, could get a really aggressive move. And the, the idea that people don't look at charts religiously, you know, I think especially if you're a new trader, you should be looking at, you know, two, three hundred charts a night just to get an idea of, you know, what is in front of you. OK, you might not even know what the hell you're looking at. OK, but eventually you will get some sort of sense of what the market is doing, right? Just by looking at charts every single day. And I look at everything, you know, I look at what beta is doing. Um, I see the stocks that don't participate in the rallies. Again, we talked about Boeing in nausea. Uh, we know the names that were very, very strong and continue to be strong. So it's your job, no matter what type of trader you are, okay, to put yourself in a position that you know what the dangers the next day can be. And it all starts from the nightly homework, right? The, the, the idea that going through two, 300 charts is kind of a pain in your, in, in, in your side is ridiculous. If you want to be uh, a serious trader, whether it's a part-time trader, full-time trader, whatever the case may be, you have to allocate that time. Again, what do you have to do after the close right now? You can't leave your house, right? You can't leave your house. Yesterday, uh, the governor of California said three more months. The mayor of LA said, uh, the, the, I think this morning that uh, until, you know, until there's a vaccine, nobody's allowed to leave their house. Some crazy stuff. So, I mean, what is your excuse for not putting in the work? And I, and I say this all the time. The, the one true level playing field that all of us have, whether you're trading for, you know, two weeks or 20 years, okay, is technical analysis. And the idea that if you sat there with a book going in overnight and you completely disregard what's actually in front of you, again, it's very, very tough to turn around and say, I didn't see it coming. How can you possibly have known the market was going to pull? Well, again, if you put in the work and you're very, very serious uh, about your job and about your craft and getting better, right? Creating that bigger edge. It's your responsibility to understand what's happening by just allocating, you know, a half an hour, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever the case may be, to looking at charts, seeing where the money flow is going, uh, see the directional bias and wait for that confirmation. And today, I, again, I, I don't think it could have played out 
uh, any better. Uh, again, we were incredibly prepared for uh, today's session. We knew that uh, 222 area on the queues, that was the five day moving average, uh, was very, very important. That this was the area that if it confirmed today, was gonna pull back. And again, I, I didn't think it was gonna pull back all the way to the 20 day moving average. We talked about yesterday, you know, there's a potential from the 222 to the 219, right? We saw that. But again, sometimes, especially in this type of market, things get so exaggerated that the average true range, even for the Qs, right, just gets really exaggerated. And the next thing you know, you're having a, an incredible waterfall, uh, AKA swan dive. Uh, and that's exactly what I saw today. So the, the, the idea, uh, I was getting a bunch of, um, bunch of messages last night and they said, Dan, I, I, you know, a lot of people turn around, I, I, I don't use the five day. I've never even heard of the five day. Why do you use the five day? Well, again, five day is the most um, shortest term sentiment. It will give you uh, a clear view of the shortest term sentiment. And once that sentiment gets confirmed in either direction, there's a very high probability uh, that you are going to get a follow through in that direction. Um, what I think, what I like the most uh, about today's session, okay, and again, we'll, we'll talk about the pivots in a second, but what I really, like I'm very proud of, of this area, it wasn't the pivots. It was the idea that we had a game plan. Again, the market gapped up this morning. At six o'clock in the morning, I woke up, I just looked at the futures and I turned around, I started giggling that, you know, the futures were up and I go, okay, it is what it is. Uh, I kind of wanted a gap up. You know, I was talking about that last night's video and I said, hey, if market God's listening, if we can get a gap up, it's much easier to get a confirmation to get a gap up than a gap down. So I, I said, look, the initial plan is to give the bears every opportunity uh, to confirm yesterday's price action with this gap up. Okay, I'm not anticipating anything, waiting patiently for confirmation. Again, I'll put a couple of pivots to the upside just in case, only for cash flow. And I said this, only for cash flow. Let's see what happens. And the most proudest part, uh, and this is kind of what we talk about individual personal growth, the idea that we waited, okay, for our plan, our opinion, our conviction to plan out, okay, to kind of play out. I think that was the most impressive part today, what we did in the, in the live webinars, especially also uh, on the Twitter feed for all you guys who trade there as well. Uh, and we didn't give in, right? We didn't give in to that early uh, moves. We didn't, you know, we, we didn't chase, we're well, not chase, I don't want to use the word chase, but we didn't participate in the NVIDIA move. We didn't participate, for example, uh, in a lot of moves for, you know, for example, that were very, very strong. I wanted to see my conviction level play out. I wanted to see the confirmation because the last thing you wanted to do, again, this was me 15 years ago. I would have been, oh, forget it, the market's going higher. Let's buy the market. And then 30 seconds later, uh, the market would have been completely fisting me right in all the wrong places and would have taught me at a very, very expensive lesson. But again, it really does show you that personal growth is the key, uh, that trusting technical analysis is incredibly important. If, if you are a serious trader, again, fundamental analysis is great. If you're a long-term investor, if you are a trader in a short-term time frame, whether that's a day an hour, five minutes, couple of days, whatever it is, if you're a short-term trader, uh, there's no greater gift that you can give to yourself than the power of technical analysis. And uh, again, I, I, I'm gonna undersell it right now, what actually happened today. There was some ridiculous moves. I mean, absolutely ridiculous moves. And uh, you know, let's, let's get into it, right? Let's get into it. So technically speaking, first of all, let me just give you guys uh, the kind of the heads up here. So uh, the Qs busted you know, yesterday's low. Uh, of that two, uh, 222 level. And again, we talked about last night, I thought there was a shot at the, at the 10 day, which is 219 and the queues just d destroyed, man. So here is the, you know, here is the 222 area and they just, just went destruction. I mean, it went all the way down to like 216 and change. And as you can imagine, so did everything else. So the market gapped up, um, you know, market gapped up and, and you saw it and a majority of the names, they were literally gapping up into supply. You, you saw it, it was obvious. Roku, uh, Roku, Tesla, um, Apple, it was, they were all gapping into supply and all was just a matter of time for us to wait. And obviously when everything confirmed, some amazing moves. Um, Zoom was good today. I actually caught Zoom to the upside today. Zoom was to the upside today. Uh, Tesla was great. Uh, Tesla was really, really good. 
Uh, Boeing, man, I traded Boeing. That was really, really good. Roku got destroyed. The most ironic part about Roku, and again, I promise we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. The most amazing part about Roku is it was, it was up a couple of bucks pre-market, and I was looking at the news. They, 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 so there was some sort of filing. They were filing 4 million shares, something. I'm like, how is this thing up? How is this, like, how is nobody seeing this news? And I put the pivot to the downside, and the stock got absolutely destroyed. So let's talk about this. Uh, and again, uh, I'm not going to be able to, to really paint it. If you were, you know, if you traded with us today in the live webinar, especially in the Twitter feed, you guys know how aggressive these things are. I'm so tired right now. I'm going to be definitely underselling what happened, but this is one of the, the better waterfalls that I've saw in a long time here. So uh, Boeing uh, 125, that was yesterday's highs. 124.35 was the pre-market lows. Uh, both levels, if it builds below, can flush. Again, we've been talking about yesterday, for example, that 128 pivot. Uh, you know, we traded down to 125. So these are the levels on Boeing. And again, we remember we were talking about 120, 120, 120. That was the big number, and Boeing got destroyed. So uh, it took out, it took out the 125, right? Took out the 125. Took out the 124, uh, 124 level as well, 124.35, and just got destroyed. Went all the way down to 119. I still like it. Uh, I th think it might t maybe take a couple of more days to get down and start getting down to this 119 level for confirmation. But again, you saw today uh, the 115s come in, the 110 puts coming in. So amazing move, amazing move on Boeing. I miss this Netflix. I, the funny thing is Netflix at one point looked like it was about to take out the 52-week high. So I, I guess I, when I went out to lunch, I missed this 431 pivot. I said it could get down to uh, uh, 427. I guess this happened at lunch. I, I don't even remember it even happening. But um, 427, we talked about the, excuse me, the 431 pivot. That was yesterday's low to get down to 27. Apparently it did. Apparently I missed it when I was at lunch. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, Amazon, uh, 2355, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was Amazon. Again, not the biggest move in the world. I thought it was going to be a much bigger move. Actually, it held up fairly well. So it took out the 2355. Why 2355? That was yesterday's low. Uh, went all the way down to 2337. So again, you know, $17, $18 pivot. Not the end of the world. Uh, I thought it was going to get down to 2320. It kind of held up here. I don't know why it stopped where it did, but uh, nevertheless, pretty good pivot there as well. Uh, Facebook got destroyed. Uh, Facebook 210, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was Facebook, right? Here's the 210 on Facebook, right? Here's the 210 on Facebook, which just got murdered. Went down to 202, got absolutely killed. Uh, VTIQ, and yeah, nobody had to locate for this thing and never put in a second entry. Crazy, crazy stock. Uh, Adobe, again, from last night's, uh, last night's watch, 364, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was Adobe. They were just literally going one by one by one, right? So here's the 364, right? That was the last two candles uh, on the daily chart. Again, the same common denominator, right? The five-day moving average stopped twice. Confirmed the five-day moving average and went all the way down to 352. I mean, this thing would put in a $12 move, uh, so big move there. Uh, Apple, that second entry on Apple uh, went down to 3, 3, 3, 3.10.85 was the pivot. Went down to 3.10 and change, then bounced. That second entry at 3.10 on Apple just got just got shelled. So here was the three, you know, here's the 3.10, right? You got here's the 310 and it just got murdered. It went all the way down to 303. Again, there was massive moves. Absolutely, if you, if you traded beta today, uh, absolutely massive moves. Tesla again, the, the, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, 808. If it builds below, can flush. Second entry on everything. So uh, Tesla broke that 808 level, went down to 805, and then rallied. So 805 was the second entry, and we shorted this thing. The first move down was to 798 and change. My lowest cover at that point uh, was 799. So I was very, very happy about that. Uh, and then another pivot came in below that 797 and took this thing down. I, I said it was gonna go down. There was a shot it was gonna get down to uh, 780. It got down to 763, just got murdered. Uh, Q's destruction, we talked about Q's. Q's went down almost $6, uh, amazing. But here was a crazy pivot, absolutely nuts pivot. Uh, and again, I couldn't figure out I, I was I was dumbfounded. Why was the stock holding up? Like, does does anybody not does everybody not see this news? Uh, One twenty six seventy held twice. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was Roku, right? Here was Roku. Here's the one twenty six seventy. These two candles. You see these two candles here? One twenty six seventy. One twenty six seventy, and just just destroyed. Went all the way down to fourteen. 
Crazy, crazy, crazy move. Again, when they pulled beta, man, they pulled these things incredible. Uh, I actually caught this trade to the upside. Uh, 169.75, 170 uh, needs to build for more. And again, only scalp trade. But listen, I caught a buck on this ZM. Uh, here is, you know, here is the 169.75, 170 area. And I said there's going to be a buck in the trade. Uh, you know, ran up like a buck and a half. So nice move here before they pulled it. They rallied it back later. Uh, DDOG, I screwed up. See, this is my point of like trading random stocks. So I get long DDOG and it runs up like 30 cents. So, so the thing is when I trade beta, I know what to expect with these things. I have no idea what to expect with, with these DDOGs and stocks. When I trade random names, I, I just don't, I have no idea what to do with them. Um, so it sat there, sat there, sat there, sat there. I finally just sold it flat, yada, yada, yada. 30 minutes later, it goes to 72. Yes, I screwed it up. It is what it is. Uh, whatever. It is what it is. So 805 second entry got destroyed. And unfortunately, I messed up this DDOG trade. If you took it, it went to like 72 and change. Great job there. Uh, take sales, right? Take sales on ZM. I mean, fantastic moves. And here's, you know, and again, guys, when, I, when I'm telling you beta got pulled, okay, they got pulled. Uh, BYND 140, 140. Uh, 141, if it builds below, can flush. Guys, look look at the, the pivot on BYND, right? So here's the 50, 4140 right here, right? 4140 right here. This thing got destroyed, went down to 127. Just absolutely destroyed. I mean, killed. Um, first, I thought 139 potential. And then it stopped at 139 potential. And then I said, hey, there's a shot it goes red. And it went red. And then it went down another nine. So crazy, I mean, just absolutely crazy moves. Uh, Boeing, again, 120 last support. And, you know, I said, you know, as, a jo as joking around, I go, welcome to uh, the wonderful world of pivots. Just incredible, incredible. I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well. Bless, bless, bless. Thank you very much. I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well. Um, just crazy stuff, crazy, crazy stuff. So macro-wise, going into tomorrow, uh, again, I had a very, very strong opinion about today's session, not so much for tomorrow. I mean, now that we uh, went through the 10, held the 20, we're kind of in no man's land here. So uh, tomorrow, you know, we kind of have a 50-50 shot. If you look at every single stock, it's right in the middle of its ranges tomorrow. Tesla's in the middle, uh, Netflix is in the middle, uh, Amazon is in the middle. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a kind of a choppy session tomorrow. Um, again, when everything's in the middle of the session, they either have to uh, confirm upwards or downwards. So we might be kind of a little bit of a bind. So I think, I think tomorrow morning we have to be a little bit patient, kind of let everything play out so we can get a clear path to the goal line. But again, guys, like I, I've been saying all the time, uh, technical analysis is your best friend. That's it. You don't need anybody uh, holding your hand. You don't need 35 opinions. You don't need anybody to tell you when to jump. Uh, when stocks confirm, they confirm, and usually good things are going to happen. Guys, God bless. Great job today. I mean, it's pretty much us to say. God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.